Hello and welcome to your 13th UDK tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to learn about material expressions and we're also going to create our very first material. So to start off with, open up your content browser. Now you can do this the usual way, we're going to view da 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 or you can just go ahead and click this icon here and open up a package and open up a material. So here we go, we have our material editor and I'm just going to introduce you to it a bit. So over here on the left we have our preview panel and pretty much this isn't anything at the moment as we haven't actually set anything about our material so this is just blank for the moment now if we go to the right a bit these are our material channels so these are the things that if we set these to something they will make something of a material these basically are the attributes or the things that define our material now the one we're actually going to be working with today is the diffuse channel which is to do with how light kind of reacts to your object and it's pretty much just the overall look of your object now you can also zoom in and out in this part by just using the scroll wheel and you can also pan around just by holding left click and dragging. Okay, I'm good with that. And now over here we have a material expressions pane and pretty much you just drag in expressions and they are modules that sometimes take inputs and sometimes don't and they pretty much give outputs that go to these channels here. So for now what we're going to do is we're just going to drag in a constant 3 vector and we're going to use a constant three vector well right first of all a vector is pretty much just a list of three numbers and in, with computers color also has three values it has red it has green and it has blue so we're going to use a constant three vector to make a color now if you go ahead and click on any expression so we're just going to click on a constant three vector then you'll see we can actually set its properties so i'm going to set the red to uh, 0 0.5 i'm going to set our green to 0.2 and I'm going to set our blue to 0.4 don't know what it's going to look like, that's horrible let's change the blue to 0.1 let's just turn off the blue in fact let's make the blue dominant <laughs> can't decide, ok let's go with this kind of purpley yeah I'll settle for that so we have this purplish color and also it's worth noticing that this description property is pretty much just a comment on top of your expression on modules so if I just type in set color then you'll see that just goes ahead and appears above our module now at the moment it's down here I'd really prefer it if it was up here so it would kind of be in line with the diffuse so if you ever want to move something you can just click it and then hold control and drag it to where you want it to be so I just want mine to be there Okay, so you'll notice we have a black tag on the left side of our vector 3, and we also have a diffuse is on the right side of our material channels. Now, when it, whenever anything's on the left side, it means it's an output, so in this case it's outputting our color, and whenever something's on the right side, it's an input, so it's willing to take an output. So you always have to join, when you're going to make links, you have to join an output to an input. And to join things, you just drag one tag, to the other tag. So we're dragging our color to the diffuse and you'll see aha now in our preview window we have a sphere that has this kind of purplish color on. Now we're just going to change the properties of our color one more time because if you actually put these above one because I'm not sure if I mentioned but it basically goes from zero to one to make regular RGB colors. Now if you boost something above one it'll boost the color and pretty much just make a glow around the object so if we change our blue, it's probably going to be the best bet here to 20 instead of 0.8 you'll see now it has this really bluish glow so if you want to boost a color just go ahead and put it above one now it usually doesn't work too well if you put more than one above one so if I just change our red to like uh, 5 or something yeah I don't know I'm not really too keen on that. I don't know, it might just be me, but I don't, I don't really like that too much. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it back to our purplish color. And also, if you ever want to break these links that we just made, you can just go ahead and control click only one of those tags, and it'll just break the link. So I'm going to link them back up. In fact, no, I'm going to break the link. So we used a constant 3 vector, but there are also like a ton of other expressions we could have used to do this. So if I just find one of them, so if we just use a vector parameter, now this is really similar, if we just put in our values which is 0.5, go away content browser, 
I don't care about you. Uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, then 20. Now, let me just delete our old module by just clicking it and clicking delete. Not clicking delete, pressing delete. And let's move our new one in line and just link him up with the diffuse. Now you see, it's pretty much exactly the same. In fact, it's not pretty much exactly the same. It is exactly the same. But you'll also notice we have these other tabs on this module. And this is actually because we can separately output our red, green, blue, and in fact our alpha value as well. Which we haven't bothered setting, but pretty much if we set this to 0 0.5. In fact, it's not going to make too much of a difference in this situation. Don't really worry about it. Let's just set it back to 1. But yeah, pretty much we can actually output these values separately. So if I just remove this link, and if we just link up our red value instead, then oh my god, what just happened? Why the hell is it white? Why why isn't it red? Why isn't it red, Joe? Well, what it is is our diffuse. Before what was happening, our diffuse is reading three numbers, and it was going, oh okay, three numbers. This is pretty simple. It's probably just red, a green, and a blue. But now what's happening is it's only being given one number, which is 0 0.5 because that's our red value. So all it's got is 0 0.5. So it thinks, um, OK, well, I guess they probably want to be black and white. So let's give it 0 0.5. And you'll see if we then actually change our red to 1, it's going to be fully white. And if we change it to something above 1, like 20, then it's actually going to have a white glow like that. But anywho, let's just set that back to 0 0.5. And let's just create our link from the black one again but pretty much the moral of this is that the black usually means the general so it usually encapsulates the other tabs so we have the vector parameter and there is one more thing I quickly want to go over even though I have touched it before if we just put in I don't know, a divide or something now you'll see this has inputs and an output and all this means is you give it some values and it outputs a value. I just want to demonstrate and say they do exist where you just have something on the right hand side and some tabs on the left hand side as well. But anyway, let's delete the divide expression for now. And let's just keep our vector parameter feeding the color because it doesn't really matter if we use our vector 3 constant or our vector parameter. So let's just save our changes and close it. So, yep. Yeah. And what did I do with the content browser? I got kind of angry with that thing. Um, let me just move it. Well, I really killed it. But you'll see here we go, material 1, and the preview has now changed. If I just go ahead and do a CSG add, hide a builder brush, and if we just drag our texture onto some of our faces, you'll see it does have the glow and it does have the purplish color that we've assigned it. So. We've learned hopefully a little bit about material expressions, we know what they are, we know how to use a vector 3 constant to represent color, and hopefully you know a bit about the diffuse channel as well. So that's the end of this tutorial, and have a nice day.